Hi, welcome to my channel. This is the Yugo M59-66 A1. This is a very interesting variant of the SKS. Not only because it has a grenade launcher, but it also has three sets of sights. Uh, the t standard sights, the night sights, and the sights for the grenade launcher. And today we're going to talk about all three of them and how to use them. Why don't we start with the standard sights? And looking to the front, if you ignore all the attachment, it's typical rectangular SKS sight and uh, it's round hooded on top with a hole so you can reach your front sight post for adjustment for the elevation. And if you own an SKS, you should have one of these front sight adjustment tools. Uh, they're cheap. They're, uh, you can buy them from AliExpress for $10 US shipped. And to adjust your elevation, you stick this part in, right there, into the hole and turn. Unfortunately for the Yugo, uh, it doesn't work. And that is because the front sight post of the Yugo is thicker, bigger than the rest of the SKS. So therefore you have to use a Dremel and widen this. Uh, so therefore they are not interchangeable with the other SKS. Okay, for vin vintage, vintage, you again see this round uh, piece on the side sides you drift them okay now if you want to move it from uh, right to left you have it setting like this and you start turning this thing and if you want to move it from left to right then you turn it this direction and you basically turn and you're drifting your entire uh, front sight uh, for windage okay so uh, moving to the back rear sight uh, that's another difference is the uh, radius the radius is only 17 and a half inches because of the grenade launcher the typical SKS radius is 19 inches and when you come to the back it's the leaf type okay uh, the Yugo normally do not uh, blue their uh, leaf and the markings from 10 down to 1 10 stands for 1,000 meters and 1 stands for 100 and the uh, dimension is the same and to move the uh, the adjustment you squeeze both of these uh, this uh, slider and you just move it to 7 and the front of the slider when it stops at 7 that's 700 meters and if I were to move it here it's not that easy to find the exact range you're looking for okay uh, let's see I'm looking for what am I looking for five okay I'm set at 500 meters and that as you can see they're not that easy to find the exact range but uh, below 100 meters is a letter I okay now other SKS uh, use uh, the Russian use a Cyrillic uh, letter uh, the Chinese use uh, a D or a num numeral own a numeral number three so what that means is when you when you squeeze the slider and goes all the way to the back you add a battle sight okay that's set at 200 meters okay so with the Yugo, you have at the back a an attachment. Okay, what you do is which brings us to the sight number two, night sight, and you see this flip up uh, sight. When you flip it up, you'll see two kind of a orangey colored dots. The dots measures about 200, uh, not two two millimeters, uh, in diameter, and they are phosphorus. And so they do um, light up at night, although this is rather weak, but it does work if I use a flashlight. Um, they also do come at tritium, uh, tritium tubes, uh, although I've never seen it, but if you go to John uh, Yoper uh, SKS site, uh, you would find uh, uh, a picture of what they look like. So they do come in phosphorus and they do come in tritium. Okay, and also, if you were to 
notice that because they attached this night sight, they had to mill out part of the front of the carrier. They, about two millimeter deep, about eight millimeter across, to clear the night sight. If not, it would end up uh, banging onto it. So, okay, so there, this is what the mill they have done. And you see, if they didn't mill it, they would collide with it. Okay. Now, moving on to the front. The front of the night sight is just a typical flip up. Um, the front phosphorus uh, diameter is bigger, it's about four millimeter in diameter. Okay, so that basically concludes the standard uh, sights and the night sights. Next is the grenade launcher sight. Okay, I'm back. Now before I talk about the grenade launcher sights, I want to actually talk about the grenade launcher itself. This part. It has three different versions. The first version it has holes, about six holes going around on the first groove, which acts like a break. Okay, and the back here where the retaining ring is, is squared off. That's the first version. The second version, they did not drill any more holes in the groove but they still kept this squared off. So that's the second version. This is the third version where no holes and the uh, retaining ring section is tapered. Okay, this is the third version. Also, you can tell the bayonet is held in. This part right here is your bayonet holder. Okay, and this is how it kind of works. Pull, it's quite different than the other bayonet. And here it goes like this that's it it locks in okay if you remember all the other bayonet has a ring and it goes into the muzzle obviously you can't do that with the muzzle so therefore they develop a separate way of attaching the bayonet all right so we have covered that and now we can start talking about the the um, grenade launcher sights. The Yugo uses only one sight. Now you're wondering like how do you do one sight? You know, okay. okay, this is the back sight and what you do, you use the top of the rifle grenade, what, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, this, in this particular case is anti-personnel, so it's the lightest. Oh, and, uh, and you use this curvature. Okay, you would use this curvature as your front sight. So if this ladder, the black, is your back sight, the curvature is the red mark, you would line it up with the uh, V-shape, and then that's your front sight. Now I also want to show you a picture of what the back sight, uh, not the back sight, the M60AT uh, looks like, which is anti-tank and uh, there it is here's a sample of different uh, rifle grenades that's out there this is spanish this is their french and this is south african but this is the yugo anti-tank as you can see it's two inches longer and 100 grams heavier this is your ap anti-personnel which is much lighter okay which is this okay this is i had to make a display model so you would have an idea how it actually works otherwise uh, I, I'm going to show you how to load it okay so to load this the real rifle grenade would have a cap at the bottom and then you would just plastic cap you would just pull it out and when you pull that out there will be a a charger or a blank uh, and then you would remove the blank okay and then you would cast this away okay the first thing you do is make sure that your trigger is on safe all right the second thing you do and uh, is to shut off the gas system and to shut it off you have to turn this button to a 12 o'clock and to do that and this button has a dual purpose 
will allow you to move this rear side ladder up and also shut the gas off at the same time. Now this button is a little stiff. What you do is press it down and then push it to 12 o'clock. There it is. Okay, and then this side ladder comes up. If you take a look at the side ladder, the bottom part says a K. That K, I believe, it stands for anti-tank, which I already showed you a picture of what it looks like. And then above that says 50 meters, 100 meters, 150 meters. Okay. And on the left says T, which is this, anti-personnel. It says 110, 175, 240. And then the side of that says 270. So in other words, you have to put the curve to this two level. So it'll go as high as 270. And I believe it actually can, could, you, could even go further, but uh, of course the aiming wouldn't be uh, really good. Okay, to show you how you load one of these, now I saw YouTube where some people would, you know, put the uh, rifle grenade in first before putting the uh, blank. Um, I personally would not do that because SKS note to uh, slam fire and um, you know if you don't clean the, uh, the boat too well you're gonna have slam fire so what I would do is uh, okay on safe first shut off the valve move up the ladder okay the ladder then put in the blank like that make sure it's in okay charge it and all you need to do is pull it back let it go now you're fully charged now when you're all ready to go now slide the rifle grenade all the way past this retaining ring like that okay now I'm ready to aim it and I'll be perfectly honest, I'm aiming at the lowest, 110, and the butt is just barely on my shoulder. This butt is about just barely touching my shoulder, and I'm aiming at 110, which is the closest range, okay? So, um, so if I'm gonna shoot, aim at 175, this will below, be below my armpit. Okay, now I'm gonna aim it at 175. Yes, 175, I'm just at my armpit. And at uh, 240, 240, guess what I am on the side of my chest and I had to pull it back and use my right arm squeeze it the butt stock between my chest and my arm and so that's basically how you aim it okay um, if you're gonna aim it using the butt stock you can barely use it at 110 anything higher than that um, with the anti-personnel it's rather difficult now you're thinking like well, well you can put it on the floor and shoot it yes you can but you can't aim it because your your head is way too high okay so if I, I've seen people shoot it from the floor but that's just guessing that's not aiming and and uh, that's basically it you're just you're just guessing on the uh, the uh, angle and just firing it off you cannot aim it so the only way you can truly aim a anti-personnel is uh, on the shoulder is at 110 okay the rest will be under your armpit now of course the um, the anti-tank is longer so if it's longer your angle is uh, is less so in other words uh, with the longer rifle grenade, like the anti-tank, the buttstock comes a little higher. So yes, at, uh, 
at I would say 50 meters for the uh, anti-personnel yes it will be quite comfortable into my shoulder okay so basically that ends the uh, how t how these uh, site work on the M59 slash 66 A1 and uh, so thank you very much for joining me and please subscribe